So please stay after and definitely come over next door. We've got some different parts for you to fill out and do some things for others, as well as lots of cookies. So you don't want to miss out on that. This Saturday, as you can see, for lunch we've been putting up a different tree each day. Today we're talking about love. That will be our tree for the day. Our big tree comes up. But we're going to need some help decorating it. So that will be 9 a.m. on Saturday. Hope to see you here for a little fellowship and have a chance to do that. Christmas Eve service, one service, 7 o'clock p.m. Christmas Eve. I see some socks up here. So. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Dorcas Smith this week and we had a nice luncheon at Joyce Hughes Sanga's house. We were a small group because people were committed to some other things this past week, but I took all the socks with me that were here for weeks gathering um, higher and higher the pile. And I'll get to that total in a few minutes. But anyways, I had a surprise text message from one of Nancy Bittler's neighbors this past week. Um, actually on Monday, who said, I have socks for your church for their sock drive. And this lady who I had spoken to at our Christmas bazaar, and it's amazing, it, it hit my heart so deeply. And I got through reading the note that she attached to her bag. And when I say bag, it was a huge Target bag, full of socks, and I didn't count how many were in the, you know, were in that bag, but it was very heavy to be carrying into Joyce's house, along with the trunk full that was in here, in addition to what she had given. So we, I got it in, and before we started the count, I saw that she had a note on it, and I want to share this note with you, because I, since we moved back seven years ago now, um, I've run into this woman. She had been a neighbor because we had lived behind them at one point when we were up, up along Mount Pleasant. And I didn't know what she has gone through. And the reason I mention this is none of us know the path what people are walking with. But I do remember, and I spoke with Peter this week, and I said, I remember seeing her like a couple, like a year and a half ago, two years ago, here or there said hello to her, couldn't remember her name at first, that type of thing. And I thought, boy, she really looks like she's aged. Well, this explains some of it. Trekking with Kirk. This is donate, this donation is made in loving memory of er Kirk M. Fackety. It was founded by Jerry Hum Fackety in 2020 in honor of her son, Kirk M. Fackety. When Kirk passed away in 2019, he left behind over 50 pairs of unique and interesting socks. His favorite accessory was that Jerry distributed them to his friends and loved ones, asking only that they wear these socks in their travels and therefore bring a little piece of Kirk with them wherever they go. In the following year, his socks went further than they would have had on two feet. They traveled across country, they flew to Europe, hiked mountaintops, swam in oceans, marched in protests, stood in voting lines, and walked down wedding aisles and more. The following year, she organized a sock drive in his honor with a goal of collecting and donating socks to Philadelphia's unsheltered community. She was surprised to receive over 1,000 pairs of socks, more than enough for every single unsheltered Philadelphian. The overflow went to organizations providing critical services across the tri-state area. She decided to make the sock drive an annual drive tradition. This year she received 2,500 pairs of socks. <laughs> and it says we are giving these socks to you in hopes that they will keep your community warm and let them know they are loved and cared about. We believe that this gift will serve as a small symbol of the kind and caring person Kirk was. But it went on from there. That night, I picked them up on Tuesday morning when I got Nancy. And when I got home that night, and then during the night I wasn't sleeping real well, so I Googled. I wanted to see what Kirk looked at like in his you know, young adult life. 
and realized I couldn't find his obituary, but I found her husband Mitch's obituary for that same year. She lost two loved persons close to her that same year. When I saw her at the, uh, when we saw her at the uh, bazaar, she was incredibly well looking, and I thought, wow, I'm glad to see she looks uplifted. Her daughter posted online about how proud she was of her mother. She's now also uh, with a, an alliance with New York City with something, but she continues with this. And she touched our lives, and she touched lives where we passed these on to, because I also copied this and gave it to, with them when I delivered their socks on Wednesday. So, with that said, and we had a lot of fun counting socks and undies. With that said, this is what was brought in this morning, and with this addition to that, ladies and gents, we collected, which I thought this was kind of funny, we collected 310 pairs prior to this, and we collected um, 59 pieces of underwear. So what our total, though, came up to, because my adding, just looking at it, was wrong. I did run on tape when I got home. 428 pieces of items. So that's okay. <laughs> and just so you know, last year was 359. So we, once again, surpassed. But I really account a lot of that surpassing, because I'm telling you, that bag was huge to Jerry and her, her family. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for organizing that. Wonderful. Other announcements that need to be brought to our attention? It's a story about a fisherman enormously successful. Every morning he would take his little boat out on the lake. In a few hours, just a few hours, he would return. The thing was loaded with fish. People wondered, how did he do it? So one day a stranger showed up and asked the man if he could go along the next time he went out fishing. The man said, sure, meet me here at the dock at 5 a.m. So the next morning, the two of them make their way out to the missed into a small little cove where the fisherman stopped the boat and cut the motor. And a stranger wondered where his fishing equipment was. There was no rod, there was no reel, it was a tackle box. And that was it. And the man pulled this rusty tackle box open, bent over, and pulled out a stick of dynamite. Took a match, lit the fuse, tossed it into the water, explosion occurred and all these fish started to float up to the surface and he got a net and started to scoop them up and toss them into the boat. Well, after watching this, the stranger reached into his pocket and he pulled out a wallet. And in his wallet, he had the badge of a game board. <laughs> and he said, you're under arrest. You know, the fisherman wasn't even that rattled. He looked at him, and he pulled out another stick of dynamite, and lit it, and he put it in his hand, and he said, so are you going to sit there, or are you going to fish? <laughs> and that's kind of our lesson for today, really. Are we going to sit there, or are we going to fish? In our scripture, I guess we could change that around a little bit to read... Let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and truth. In other words, let's put the gift of love into action. <clears throat> let's prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. <clears throat>
rise for a call to worship. We continue our new year in the church as we prepare for Christ's Advent. We thank God for this Advent season to remind us of the gift of our Son. Our thankfulness sought to result in an honest expression of love for one another. Allow us to have that kind of love in our hearts for one another. We thank God for the wonderful gift of love. Let's join in hymn number 43, Love Divine, All Loves Excel. Our boasting, our selfish stubbornness, 
Help us to put away our childish ways of greed and quarreling, that we may serve you with the perfect gift of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Having received new life through the generosity and love of God and the hope that Christ brings, one fact remains that does not change. God has loved you, loves you now, and will always love you. This is the good news that brings us new life. The almighty and merciful God grant us pardon and remission of our sins, time for the amendment of life, and the grace and the comfort of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. As we gather around the Advent wreath today, we rejoice that Christmas is a time of prayer and of open hearts when we sing songs of joy. Christmas is a time of worship, the moment when the busiest of us pauses in wonder. Christmas happens when God comes to us in love through Jesus Christ and fills us with love for all humankind. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With the coming of this light, there is love. Such great love helps us to love God and one another.
Please rise for our hymn number 166, Immortal Love, Forever Full. I really like. 
I thought you might like to play with them too, but I would like them back. You didn't lose the bag, did you, Daddy? Tears started to well up in her eyes. No, no, I, uh, I just forgot to bring it home. I'll bring it tomorrow, okay? Don't worry. She hugged her dad's neck with relief, and as she left, he unfolded the note that had not made it into the sack, and it read, I love you, Daddy. Molly had given her dad her real treasures. She had given him all that a seven-year-old girl held dear, love, and a paper sack. Dad missed it. Not only missed it, he threw it away. He didn't see anything valuable there. Oh, dear God, forgive me. He prayed as fathers often have to do. And he got on his coat and he rushed back to the office, searched through the garbage for Molly's jewels. Fortunately, he got them just ahead of the janitor, and he did find them. Yes, he had to wash mustard off the dinosaur, and there was a little bit of a smell of onions, you know, a little breath freshener helped to straighten that up. But he did find them and clean them up for her. And the next evening, he returned the precious sack to Molly, paper clips on it and all. And he listened attentively as Molly described the importance of each and every single item in the bag. Several days later, Dad got to take the bag to work again. So he felt forgiven and trusted and loved. And we might add a little more comfortable wearing the title of father. Now the father in this story is author Robert Fulgham. And he ends in these words. In time, Molly turned her attention to other things. She found other treasures, lost interest in the game, grew up. Me? I was left holding the bag. <laughs> Literally. She gave it to me one morning and never asked for its return. And so I still have it. If the house ever catches on fire, that bag goes with me when I run. I think of all the times in a sweet life when I have missed the affection I was being given. A friend calls this standing knee deep in the river and dying of thirst. So the warm paper sack is there, left from a time when a child said, here, this is the best I've got. Take, it's yours, such as I have. I give to thee. Doesn't this remind us of a very important truth? That the best gifts of all are the gifts that money can't buy. And today we want to talk about that very special gift that we call love. Jesus tells his disciples, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. To abide is to remain, to linger, to tarry. We learn to love one another because we first have been loved by God. Love is an experience before it is an expression. One reason we tend to be feeble lovers of others, because we haven't really grasped or experienced the depth of God's love that he has for us. If we're going to love one another, the first thing we need to do is to simply abide in God's love. Because when we abide in that love, we are empowered to act in love. Because love is an action verb. It calls us to do things. Take a moment. And I want you to think of the things you did this past week that were motivated by <coughs> love. Our Advent gift this week is to send Christmas cards to those who can't be with us today. And you'll find those over in Deadline Hall after the service. It won't be in the back of the church. It'll be in Deadline Hall. 
And that certainly would qualify as an act of love. So think of the qualities of love as an action. And give to others this week. For we are called to love one another. As Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. To love is to treat others fairly. The golden rule is still golden. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And with all the unrest in our country and the world today, it's easy to feel that fear is causing us to falter from our long-held values. General Omar Bradley from the ranks of World War II says, the world has achieved brilliance without wisdom, power without conscience. Ours is a world of nuclear giants and ethical infants. Are we seeing a new wave of racism and profiling sweeping across America as we struggle to find a just solution to illegal immigration? Have the cultural and political divisions among Americans destroyed our civility toward one another, diminishing healthy debate in the high volume of demonizing? Well, what if we started right here, right now, in this small country church, in this little corner of the world, bringing love into action by doing unto others as you would have them do unto you? Could it make a difference? It could. If you remember that to love is to forgive freely. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Because if you think about it, forgiveness is really an empowered form of giving. It doesn't change the past. It only opens the door to a better future. Forgiveness is setting a prisoner free and then discovering that the prisoner all along was actually you. How many of you can relate to Joe? Joe got cheated out of a promised retirement about 15 years ago. He knows for sure who did it. It was the new vice president in charge of personnel. But everyone who has spent more than 15 minutes with Joe knows that story. They've heard it. Every taxi driver who's driven in more than two miles has heard it. The postman knows. The woman at the checkout counter knows. His rage just becomes very being. Joe is his own bitterness. If you don't want to live a life of hate, then you need to learn how to forgive. Pastor Bill of Booknight says that one of the gifts that Christ gives us is a heart transplant. He explains, not the surgical variety. I refer to the change of values, attitudes, and desires that are caused by Christ living with us and within us. He takes up residence in the depths of our subconscious and transforms us from the inside out. As the Bible declares, if a person be in Christ, he is a new creation. Back during World War II, four young American soldiers who had been on the front lines of battle for way too long were sent back away from the fighting to a small French village for a little r and &R. When they arrived safely in the village, they suddenly realized it was Christmas Eve. They began to discuss how they would like to spend Christmas. And one of the soldiers said, you know, as we were coming into town earlier today, I noticed an orphanage on the outskirts of the village. Why don't we go there in the morning, take some Christmas joy to the children. The others liked the idea, the more they talked about it, the more excited they became. So they went out and bought all kinds of toys and candy and clothing, food and books and games. And early the next morning, they showed up at the front door of the orphanage with wonderful Christmas presents for all of the children. Oh, 
the orphanage director was beyond pleased, and all the children were delighted as they opened their gifts. All the children except one. One little girl who sat quietly off to the side. She appeared to be five or six years old. Her face looked so sad. One of the American soldiers noticed that she wasn't participating, asked the orphanage director about the little girl. Bless her heart, said the director. She just came in last week. Both of her parents were killed in a car wreck. No one to take her in, so we brought her here. The soldier went over to the little girl and gently said to her, it's Christmas morning. We have Christmas presents, wonderful presents here, toys and games and clothes and books and puzzles. Is there something you would like? What do you want most for Christmas? The little girl looked at him and said, I want somebody to hold me. Maybe that is the best Christmas gift of all. Someone to hold us. Somebody once put it, rich is not what you have. It's who you have beside you. This sacred season comes along once a year to remind us that love came down at Christmas. That God is even now reaching out to us with open arms. That he wants us to accept his love. He wants us to pass it on to others. Amen. Joys and concerns, we do have our meeting today, and afterwards we will be going over into Fellowship Hall. You can sign some cards for people over there. They'll be filling out some parts that will also be put on a wreath, and eating cookies. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I look forward to seeing you over there. I have a big concern today. I got a call this morning at 8 a.m., and then Rita Miller was in a car accident yesterday. She is at Reading Hospital. Um, there are a number of injuries, but I think she's doing okay. At least she's been texting Nancy Dinnerline, you know, and she's able to do that. So there's some good for that. She's up to those kinds of things. I sent her a text this morning. Um, please, let's put her on the prayer list and add her into the prayers. Um, she wasn't driving the car at the time but somebody came flying through at breakneck speed and there was no way to avoid it. So please keep her in your prayers. Other things for joys and concerns, Lee. Comments about that. It's good to have you back. Thank you, it's nice to be back. For those of you who don't know, on Friday, Tom had his knee replaced complete knee replacement. And having experienced double knee replacement myself, as have others in here, and suffered for a long time, I was totally, completely, outrageously uh, excited that he came home after, it was an outpatient procedure. He came home after five hours. He walked with the walker during that day, decided he only needed a cane managed to come up our steps, and we have an old house with steps that go around, and sleep in his own bed that night. I gave him pain medication that he said he didn't need, but I thought it would help him sleep through the night. Uh, actually, it upset his stomach. The next morning he woke up and the physical therapist came, and she was amazed at how he could straighten it and bend it already. He complained of a pain level of maybe one or two, and then last night, I noticed he was running a low-grade fever. So I called the physical therapist, because that's the first line of attack, and she said that uh, that's, she checked with the doctor, and she said that's very normal. 
He also is catching a cold, which is going around. So we, we asked if he could take Musinex, which they said he could. So we gave him some Musinex, uh, didn't give him any pain medication because he said he didn't need it, and he went to sleep. And this morning he got up and had no temperature whatsoever, and he said he had no pain, which is like unheard of. <laughs> and he has an incision that's this big, I'll get to see it on Tuesday, and it's glued, not stapled. It's like, oh my God. If I could have only. So um, my joy is that he is doing extremely well. Uh, he's really very, very mobile, and he feels very well so far. And he, I hope he continues. He even tried to come to church today. Yeah, well, <laughs> he was in pajamas. <laughs> Please give him our best. Wonderful. Thank you. He can come off the prayer list. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just got a text from Edwina thanking all of us for our concern and our prayers and sending her love. Great. Thanks. So, sure. prayers for all the people who have been uh, affected by the tornadoes down in Illinois through Tennessee, Kentucky, and all of that. And prayers also for those who had to shelter in place in safe places for overnight that night because it was multiple states of people that really went through horror during the night hearing other things yeah. and stuff. So please keep them in your prayers and um, if you can, reach out to whatever you can do. Thank you, sir. Thank you. How does, let us pray. Oh God, we offer a prayer of thanks for love. We acknowledge you as its source and creator, and our gratitude is great. Thank you for the imagination of love that enables us always to envision a world more kind, more just, more peaceful. Thank you for the opportunities to love. For you bid us to not only have a more active imagination, but and an acting one that puts faithfulness into deeds. Thank you for the tenderness of love that brings comfort, brings healing to harsh places of physical ills. Thank you for the power of your love, generated by your grace and forgiveness, a power that accomplishes through us what we consider impossible. It gives us courage to serve unselfishly. Our thanks is deep. Hear now our silent prayer for those persons and situations in need of your love and our concern. We offer our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, <coughs> who taught us to pray, saying, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
tender mercy of God dawn upon you, the hope from on high shine brightly for you, guiding your feet into the ways of love and of peace. Amen.